nine weeks grades have just been released and uh, report cards are, are headed, to, headed home. And depending on how your child performed this last nine weeks, you may have some challenges ahead of you. Either you know they did super well and they want to avoid a, a, the, the slump this next nine weeks, or they didn't perform quite so well and they need to have a reboot. Uh, we're here today with Kami Nicely, uh, TCPS school counselor, and Jen Ford from our county public libraries to discuss some things that you can do. Thanks so much and welcome to Engage Chesterfield. Thank you. So if a student has done really well in the last nine weeks and super excited about their grades, but you know they're concerned about keeping that momentum going, what are some things that you can do at home to kind of help them relax and, and, and keep working certainly, but not, not uh, fixate on it? Um, I, I, I think every student is different, and I think parents know their students best. Um, part of it is having open communication with them. How, how, well, how much stress were they under getting those grades? Having, trying to make sure that they're keeping a balance or if they're not taking the homework and the, the grades as seriously as they need to, kind of swinging them up into um, kind of focusing on it a little bit more. Um, but I feel that having the open communication with them, sitting down, looking at the report card with them and go through each class. How difficult was it to get that grade? What were the things that you did this nine weeks um, that you felt helped get that grade, whether it's a good grade or a bad grade. Um, looking at a bad grade, what were the things that you feel um, caused that? Did, were we doing the homework? Did we have bad quiz grades, bad test grades? And if you go line by line on that report card and really talking with your student and understanding where were the highlights, where were the pitfalls, and then making those adjustments that nine weeks. Um, and I feel not letting them go the whole nine weeks, like, yay, you, you did it. Okay, I'm not going to look at it again for nine weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe just doing a check-in every week or two on uh, Parent View just to make sure we're still heading in the right direction. So really just kind of keeping that strong conversation going. Open communication with your kids. So let me just ask you this. As a school counselor, what do you think about, you know, giving your child incentives for good grades? Do you think that that's the way, you know, they should be used or? Um, Again, I think every student's different. Some are intrinsically motivated and they're going to push themselves no matter what we do. Sometimes pushing themselves too much. They want, you know, all the APs I can. And, and sometimes we as parents have to say, whoa, whoa, you know, we're, we need to kind of look at this in the big picture. And then other kids, they're not intrinsically motivated. So those are the things that you can set down with them and say, what are some things we can work for? What are the things that you want to work for? And of course, in reason, um, whatever it is for them. Um, and, and, and then set goals uh, maybe short-term goals like well to reach that goal you know each week maybe we're not gonna have any zeros and just again letting them have ownership in it not just the parents saying you will do this uh, because if they own it they're gonna tend to want to do it yeah that, that truly sounds like a, a, a good approach let's say you've done that you've had those conversations and you know, they're still struggling. There's mm -hmm. still some areas that it's not necessarily a behavior-driven performance. It's maybe something that, that they're just having a hard time getting at. What are some strategies that are, are some supports that you can think of? Um, um, I think one of the things uh, we see when students go into high school, and the parents think, well, you're all grown up now. Good luck. And, and I don't need to be that involved. And I think that as um, high school parents, especially when they're coming in as ninth graders, we do need to be involved a little bit more. Some students, um, you know, that front part of their brain still isn't developed where they can't see far down the road, they can't see assignments that are weeks ahead. They really just see today and maybe tomorrow. Um, setting up a time and a place each day. Um, the research says the dining room is a great place. It's not in the kitchen where there's so much activity, but it's not in their bedroom where you don't know what's going on. So setting up a time and a place each day where you know their calculators and their pens and their pencils and everything is there, and that that's a screen, that's a time where the screen is not there. So their phone's not there, um, and they're actually just doing. And they may say, you may say, well, let's sit down for an hour. You're going to be in there. I'm going to be cooking dinner or what have you. Um, and just work. Well, I don't have any work to do. Well, then just study. Just look over your notes. Just So really carving that time out for them where maybe they don't have that skill set yet and that discipline of carving it out for themselves. 
Great. So let me ask you this then to a follow-up. So this is the child that was having the true legit struggles. Let's let's say the student that you know refuses to do it. That's just like I'm done. I'm not doing this. You know, what are your thoughts about um, kind of disciplinary actions around kind of changing behaviors mm -hmm. at home? Um, I am the proponent that if you um, make things uncomfortable, that shapes behavior. So the phone is the number one thing that students will tell you if that phone is taken away, their life is over. And so to me, if that's the number one thing that drives your behavior, then that's the thing that I'm gonna set limits on. So maybe from four to seven, there's no phone time. And that time, if you are doing and working um, the way that you need to be, then you get that phone back. The other thing that I say is um, we as parents have to take the phones out of their rooms at night. They, the, the increased phone time and typically smartphones, um, all the apps that they have, keep them up at night and kids are getting less and less sleep. And all of the research shows that. So students have hard times concentrating if they're tired. So taking that phone away at night or taking the, the phone away when they're not doing the things that they need to do, or whatever it is that they cherish or love, if it's an activity. Um, but if you make it uncomfortable, that shapes behavior. That is actually a good way. I wish that I could have been able to change the Wi-Fi password to get things done when mine were little. Um, let me ask you then, so what, in terms of partnering then with, with their teacher, mm -hmm. what would you suggest families do to support their child uh, you know, through this process? Um, I think if there's a particular class that they're struggling with, communication, communication with the teacher, and that could be the student and the parent meeting with that teacher and really understanding um, what is the teacher seeing in the classroom um, and what is the parent seeing at home and then work together as a partnership. Um, talk with the school counselor, find out if there's tutoring um, after school, if there, um, sometimes the National Honor Society will do free help sessions, um, maybe partnering with the library and some of the things that, the services that they have offered. And I mean, this is a great segue. The library is, Jen, it's such an amazing thing. Every time I sit and look and, and see what they do, it's more and more. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about uh, some of the programs that are available at the library to help families and sure. students learn? Well, you mentioned homework help, and that's a really great resource that we have. Um, it's through the Credo Reference Center um, on the library's website. Mm -hmm. um, it serves students, um, it says third grade through 12th grade, but we've heard that they will sometimes help younger students as well. Um, it's really easy. They just log on with their first name, what grade they're in, and what subject they need help with. And it matches the student with a state certified teacher who will help them go through the assignment. So let's say you have a high schooler who's, you know, needs some help with some algebra homework. So they log in, they get matched up with a teacher who can help them with that. They have um, access to a digital whiteboard that they can collaborate with on, go through the algebra problem step by step until they get it. And they will work with that student until the assignment is completely done. And that is free? It is free. Wow, that's crazy. So just um, being a member of the public library then? Yes, yes. And can you do that do you, from home as well? You can. Um, and if a student doesn't have com a computer or internet access at home, they can also access it at the library. Um, the hours for homework help are 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. during the week, Monday through Thursday, and 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday. So it's sort of an off hours, you know, availability for them when they don't have access to their teachers at school. Because a lot of times they, they don't realize they don't understand it until 7 o'clock at night exactly. when everyone has left school. Exactly. <laughs> and you don't have any idea how to do that math problem. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, beyond that, there are also some other resources to support students with testing and, and uh, uh, AP test and SAT and ACT test, sure. which are kind of on the horizon for a lot of our high school students. Sure. So Learning Express is a great resource for that. It's a little different from homework help in that the student does have to um, set up an account for themselves first. It's, it's simple. I mean, it's just first name, last name, email address, and password. Um, but the, the trade-off to going that extra step is that the program will actually save their work as they go. So if they you know, want to spend 30 minutes and then go do something else and come back later, when they log back in, they can pick up right where they left off. Um, so Learning Express is sort of a combination of practice tests and ebooks that help supplement the information in the practice tests. So it's, it's really great for just 
um, being able to get some extra help in a specific category like algebra again, um, or if they want to practice for you know an AP test or an SAT test, um, they can choose to have it timed. Um, the timer doesn't really mean anything. It just gives them. It's not going to kick them out. You know when it when the time is up. It just it gives them an idea of you know this is what 30 minutes feels like. This is what 45 minutes feels like. So they can see where they feel, um, or they can take it untimed, and that kind of takes the pressure off, and they just go through the exam, and at the end it tells them where they need more work and suggests an ebook that can help them with that. Well, that is a great, a totally great use of screen time, then, if you're talking about what you can do right. to learn to learn and study <laughs> and practice more. Um, and thanks, man. I mean, if you're not a member of the public library, you really need to join because get that card. There's so many resources available. Um, thanks so much for joining us today on Engage Chesterfield, your time and expertise. I, I really appreciate that you shared it. And thank you for joining us on Engage Chesterfield.